Hi, welcome back to Culture and Broad Shop. I'm Derek Fraser. On this episode, I'm going to talk about what we did to reconstruct the cab. Um, again, it's another thing where we weren't doing the YouTube videos when we uh, were working on it. So, but I've got lots and lots of pictures. I've got pieces of sheet metal that I fabricated for it. But I'm going to describe what we did. We're going to insert a lot of pictures along the way. Um, but essentially for the cab, when I originally got it, it was like this, the front and back rocked, the subframe was pretty much shot. I had a 32 firewall, but I only had the top third as I described in the uh, a previous uh, episode. So essentially from about here down, I had to reconstruct. So in the process of building the cab back, the first step was to reconstruct the 32 firewall and get it square and then have it bolted onto the frame at the right angle. The next step was I disassembled the cowl, the top of the body and the back of the body from the subframe um, and then took the doors off as well. The cowl I then mounted onto the 32 firewall because that's where we started to get the geometry. Um, then also the A pillars had to be perpendicular to the frame so that was an adjustment I made. Once I kind of had that set up with the cowl and the two A pillars square both to the frame and, and to each other this way, um, I went through the process of taking the subframe apart and building a new subframe for it. I could have ordered one but I really wanted to uh, make as much stuff as I possibly could myself. It's mostly made out of inch and a half square tubing, which I welded together. Um, we'll insert the pictures here of how I did that. So then the subframe was basically tied into the cowl and up and bolted to the floor. The next step on it was to bring the back of the, well, actually the next step, sorry, was to put the doors on and then make sure that the doors were square with the frame again, making sure the A pillar straight, the doors square. So doors went on both sides. Then I brought the back of the cab in to square it up and basically tacked it in place um, and then put the, the kind of laid the roof on top. The back was pretty much shot. Um, all the sheet metal was warped and stretched. Um, here is this is normally my heat shield for the back of the wood stove, but that is the original back. Um, I'm sure that there's someone out there that could probably flatten it out and, and everything else. I just decided to make a new one. We're going to go over to the other garage in a couple minutes and I'm going to talk about how I made this for the back of the cab. I'm just going to stick it over here where it normally is. Oh, this is one of the door skins here. We kept one of the door skins. It had something onto it, bronze guard or something. We took off of the door skins. Just kind of neat to have it hanging there. Um, so around the back of the cab, so I put it together in a bunch of pieces. The um, more or less started with the bottom, started making quarter pieces and then made three sections here. I welded them together. Again, I'll go over into the other um, shop there and show you some of the pieces. And the same thing as I worked my way up through the top of the back of the cab. There was a lot of stuff. Really, the only thing that's original on this is basically the belt line. And then the window here, as you're going to see from the pictures we inserted, a lot of the flat stuff was relatively straightforward to do. Um, there was pieces up here that are a little more intricate. Uh, one of the more challenging pieces was actually to make this piece here. And, and again, we're going to go over there and I'll show you actually how I made this piece. Um, so yeah, let's just go over to the um, other garage and I will show you how I made some of the panels and like I said there'll be lots of pictures inserted. So we're over in the other garage 
The back panels, I saved one of the pieces that um, I was playing around with. So the back panel consisted of three pieces with a pattern like this on it. Um, I did it this the same way that I did the other stuff. Um, I made, basically, I used the bead roller. I've got the sharp edge here, and I've got the rounded edge on the bottom. And basically, fed it through, um, made a line like this all the way around. Like I said, this was one of my test panels, but I had basically made three of these, made them exactly to the size of the original panel, and then I welded them together, um, hammered out the welds, made it smooth, um, and then that's how I made the back panel. Some of the other, like the one on the roof line, this was one of my trial pieces. Um, as you can see, it's kind of relatively intricate. I originally thought about making it in two pieces and welding it along the bottom. But what I did, I found it, this piece here. Essentially, you take a piece, you bead roll both sides, then you fold this piece over as far as you can. And then I just stuck it in a vise. I, I drew a line. I drew a line on the bottom there, approximately where I wanted to bend it back. Then I put the piece in the vise. And So it's a little rough, but and it's not exactly the same shape as this one that I did, but you got the idea. So basically form form your bead, form your bead, bend it over. This still would have to be flattened out um, to get this nice thin piece all the way around. And then in order to form it like around the cab corner, I simply just stuck it on the shrinker. I took a straight piece. And yeah, that's a shrinker there. So I just kept working it in the shrinker until I, I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So basically until I turned the right edge onto it. So that's the one top of the cab corner. Then for this edge here, basically I hammered it down and then shrunk some of these along here so that it welded in place. So. You know, um, like I said, they'll insert a picture of when I was working on it and how I welded it in. Um, some of the other things, like the bottoms of the quarter panels of the doors, I, same same thing as what I did for the 32 five window, like I did here. The bottoms of the doors take a flat piece of metal, um, run it through the bead roller on both sides, and then bend it over. So that was the bottom of each one of the quarter panels and then around the back of the cab the same way. A um, lot of sheet metal work that went into the cab. A um, lot of things we did to it. I'm going to cover the doors on another episode. Um, but that's it. That's how we, the basics of what we did to bring the 32 Ford pickup cab back to life. Um, took quite a long time, made a lot of panels, um, but just plugged at it. Anyway, that's it. That's our story about how we resurrected the 32 Ford pickup cab, or the one that you just saw at the beginning of the episode. Um, I guess if I can do it, anybody can do it, I guess is my motto. Um, if you don't have the tools, there's always something around that you can use to make the tools, as I just showed you with the hammer and the piece of uh, bar there. So. Don't always have to buy your panels. You just have to persist and try making it yourself. Anyway, that's it for another episode of Cold Stream Rod Shop. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please send your comments as many people have. And uh, happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas, too. Take care.